Dummy Switch Pod. Let's the go, boys are go. back. How are you, Chris? Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Is, oh, I feel like I kissed my sister this weekend, but uh, oh, <laughs> dude, uh, you know. Uh, quite the Sharks let us all down. What can I say? The Sharks let us all down. <laughs> <laughs> This was ah. supposed to be reserved for the end of the podcast, but I mean, just looking at the permutations, it's one of those where the Lions could have even made it. Uh, mm. I mean, given last week's defeat and then the Sharks this week, things could have shaped up. This is almost like the worst case scenario, but again, mm. at least we got some teams in. Yeah, and how are you doing? How are you doing, bro? Uh, a Lions team, a Lions team, the 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 no defense game as we'd call it, but uh, <laughs> I think let's let's start with the Stormers, Stormers versus Benetton, the reigning champions that are looking. I think yeah. they're now looking like they can be defeated, whereas previously they weren't. Yeah, yeah, they're looking vulnerable right now, and I think increasingly we're seeing the importance of a Dion Fury, uh, to yep. be to be honest, because they're struggling with breakdown ball uh, on their own ball uh, in terms of uh, the producing the ball quick enough so that they can play that up-tempo game of theirs and put teams under pressure. But then also an opposition ball, because for a moment it looked like Benetton were about to pull a number on them, if we're being honest. Um, yeah, they were they, but... they were definitely playing, and you could see that there was, there was a growing confidence at times in that game where you should, yeah. you should be shutting that down. And I don't know if it's a Danny Craven thing, yeah. you know, maybe Greenpoint, they would have they would have fared better, but it can, it can also be the furry thing. Yeah, I, I I think maybe a combination of the two as well, you know. But um, I think if the storm is especially going into into the the the, the, not, the next round of the knockouts against the pools, they're in a very precarious position because they they now. If things are not happening for them, and it's it's at the wrong time of the season, you know, where now they they they, they just they're struggling to be firing on all cylinders. I think it was just the home ground advantage and that bit of quality that got them through against Benetton. But yeah, at the moment they're just not the same, you know, and they need to. I think they'll be they're pushing very hard to try to find to find their mojo again, you know, because it's now it's do or die. You know, it wasn't really a good game. Uh, also, you know, yeah, some good attacking play, good attacking shape that you saw, you know, but again, it's also, you know, lapses of concentration and defense, you know, just it was a bit too easy at times in the beginning, especially for Benetton, you know, until the Stormers just woke up and started to play as well and realized that, you know, something was going to, bad's going to happen yeah, if they don't get their act together. But, Look, they got the results and they threw. So yeah, there was the next one for them. There was no fear factor from Benetton, and yeah, they came in there swinging. They came in there swinging mm. and having a good time. So even some of the some of the better plays sometimes came from them. Uh, yes, Ruiz, Ruiz back in the thick of things, big carries. That's the only thing that I can say. Maybe he's gonna add a bit more balance to that trio. But then again, yeah. you see the yellow, and it's it's. Two steps forward, Stupid. one step back. Uh, but I mean, he, he's really? always been that type of player. You know, I think it just it just gets doesn't get highlighted as much. But I think he's always been that kind of a player. There's an argument for JJ Kotsa, you know, because <laughs> he had good lineouts and he scored a try versus Dweba giving away a try. But again, I, I feel like it goes to the same thing with Krobla, where it's like the level of opposition. Yeah made him look yeah. slightly better than... It's the same thing yeah. with the Bulls this weekend. They're going to be Krobla again. They're going to be saying he should get selected over Dribble, but again, it's a Leinster third third team. So... Yeah. Uh, I don't yeah. know. The, the other no, thing... I think Dribble is fine. They, yep. they must leave him alone. <laughs> they must leave him alone. He's doing well. Yeah, and for me, the biggest thing with Dweba is the physicality, especially in the tight. When you look at him, how he can clean a ruck, especially against carries. Monster, you saw the way that he that, that he cleaned the ruck and how he works in the tight. Yes. Though so that's the kind of thing that's going to matter more than lineouts, I would say. Yeah, I think so in terms of overall game, you know. I think overall game, he's got the total package. He's more impactful, you know. 
Then Okotsa, you know, Okotsa is not there right now. So I, I don't even know why they need to be putting them in the same basket, you know. Uh, you, the ones are bock, the ones not. Uh, you know, it's as simple as that uh, at the end of the day. So, yeah, I'm, 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 I think Durban is, and he's fitted in well with the Stormers and I think he can only get better from here and it's going to be, you know, injury free, you know, if he makes the box squad, it's a, it's a, it's a dangerous sort of uh, hookers that we've got, you know, it's consistently staying like that, you know, so I'm okay. I'm okay with Joseph, Joseph Durban. <laughs> yeah, other thing, Van Heerden, Van Heerden went off, you know, another injury to the pack might be be something but i guess yeah. there's a week off they can assess um mm. moving forward to lions lions zebra the game with no defense um yeah. <laughs> you know you know the thing is Whoa. i you can draw positives i've always said that ricardo lobsha is a fraud <clears throat> but the back line <laughs> at times some of those set moves it was looking good obviously yeah. they, they had that platform <laughs> From guys like in Kanye, who's, you know, he's he's set that platform recently in in, yeah. in a lot of games, and I feel they're playing, but at the same time, I can't be too happy because of that no defense thing. It does it was like a game of touch. Yeah, yeah, it was it almost was like touch, honestly, and you could see it was almost like the guys were just uh, having a go, you know, having a crack. Um, and and then and, and and you're right when you talk about Ntlabaganye or, or when you mention his name, all I can think of is definitely one for the future, you know, especially a tight head, you know, and just the work that he gets through. I think he, at the moment he's sort of he's becoming one of the better tight heads, you know, especially up and coming youngsters. Um, and and, and I think it bodes well for the future of the Lions. I think they need to make sure, doubly make sure that they keep a guy like him there. If they know. did today, today it was announced that. Interesting, interesting, very interesting. They announced players that were committed. You've got the mm. likes of Nklabakanye. I think that, for me, was the biggest one. Henko van Veik's mm. another guy. But, I mean, Henko van Veik is injured at the moment. So, you you don't really see players that are injured looking for moves abroad. So, I think he's also looking for stability. But yeah. the interesting thing is, those who are announced, it's interesting to see who will leave. And uh, they've already had Albert van den Berg say that he's leaving after apparently one of the lion staff that looks after the laptops was taking photos of his personal messages with his agent so mm. you know it's it's been noted as a bad environment so now they've yeah. told us who's staying but it's it's gonna it's gonna come up in coming weeks who's actually leaving because of that who's going yeah yeah, and I think it's uh, the Lions' environment, you know, uh, behind the scenes is concerning. You know, I think they need to also sort out their, their back office because if they don't, you just see more struggles for them in the future, you know. But uh, I didn't know about the Ntlabagani uh, commitment. Uh, so I, I think it's a good move from them, especially securing him. Uh, I, I think they definitely one for the future. I can see him as a block, you know. So... Mm. Yeah, you know, it's unfortunate from the back is leaving because I thought you know the pack was starting to find them find good uh, find good rhythm there, you know, and 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 really start to work well for together and work for each other, you know. So like you said, it's interesting to see who's gonna who else is gonna be going out and then who's gonna be coming in as well, you know, especially from a coaching point of view. So I think there's a lot to be seen there at the Lions. But overall, look, at least they got the results on the weekend, you know, they kept on that momentum. It's just disappointing defensively, as you mentioned. Yes, I agree. Um, but you know, last game they gave it a crack. Uh, you can see, you can see the the potential of what they can become. You know, but whether they'll get there, I think that's still the, what's to be seen. Yeah, the only other thing from this is Nohamba, especially his kicking. He has been kicking yeah. very well, so that that could yeah. be. You're talking about France and who's going kicking option especially for him that's yeah besides his his general play which has been good as well yeah he's he's, he's all of a sudden he's made himself uh an option you know where he's for trying to force his way into the conversation and all of a sudden we're looking at the number nines um then do we look we look healthy especially if guys do come back from injury you know uh, like Jaden Hendricks uh, and then you know you've got Faf who most probably he'll go. Um, you got Jaden Hendricks, you've got Grant Williams, you've got Hershey Yankees, and then you've got Mohamba as well. So 
it's a uh, it's it's a very narrow bottleneck there, and it's gonna it's tight, you know. But yeah, he's 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 made himself a viable option, especially because of that kicking game. You know, already that's one up on on on, on Herschel Yankees, if you know what I mean, in that department. You know, because yeah, yeah, he he he's just right now is offering more. You know, and, and which Herschel is is there and there about, but not consistent enough right now. Yeah, moving moving on to the Bulls. Last week, I said it was fake confidence that results. I think this one is also <laughs> a sprinkling of fake confidence. But ah, come I'll on, give be, them be, be, be kind to them. I'll give them. Okay, it's 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 not as fake confidence. It'll be <laughs> it'll be, it'll be a bit more genuine confidence. This confidence going, you know, they got the points again. The waves of attack. I think that's. The best yeah. thing to come out of this was that those waves of attack that that they had that made them dangerous, those were back. Yes, yeah, yeah. I, 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 I think it, the big difference that I'm seeing there is they intent on trying to keep the ball off the floor. You know, more often than not, to try and not um, sort of play breakdown to breakdown as much. You know, but if they do regenerate the recycle that ball quickly, you know, to keep that momentum. And look, uh, yes, regardless of the side that Munster put out, uh, that Leinster put out, you know, that was, uh, that was almost like the kind of bulls of all that you want to see. They're constantly coming at you, aggressive, yeah. they're being physical, they're coming around the corner, there's momentum, strong, hard carries, strong, hard tackles, you know, and then you've got the magic men that are just cutting things up. And I would argue that it's those magic men that are forcing everybody else to play well because, I mean, you can't have those two guys in your team, you know, in Kurt Lee and Ken and Moody, then you, then, then you, 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 you're not even giving them that platform, yeah. you know, because if you're not giving them that platform, you, you, you're you not even giving yourself a half a chance. And you, you, I think it was credit the Bulls there, you know, and credit to, uh, I, I'll, I'll say it, you know, I called out a few weeks ago, you know, to say that McKay hasn't, and he's, he's slowly starting to step up, you know, with his intent. Um, yeah. I think that's I think that's the main thing that stuck out for me in the Bulls game is that they had more intent in the way that they yes, wanted to I'll, play. I'll more give, purpose. Yeah, I'll, yeah, definitely. I'll, I'll give them that. You know, that, 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 the purpose, the intent. And, and, and look, it's happening at the right time for them. <laughs> Strangely enough, you know, and with the game that's coming up against the Stormers, this is like the big test for them because they've been struggling to get one over the Stormers in recent times. And, they, they, you know, okay, injuries permitting, we'll see how it goes, you know, because there's a week off. But I think if they can keep up this, this, this we hope it's not fake confidence, <laughs> you know. You, you know, but, the thing is, if mm. they were facing, let's say, a Glasgow Warriors team, then I would I would say, you know what, as much as it is a confidence coming from two weaker sides, that could roll on and it could benefit them. The mm. problem I have now is you're going to be facing the Stormers where it might not be, it it, it might not be enough. Yeah, no, I, I hear you. I hear you. Uh, I just, I, I, I think I just have this, uh, this, this feeling that I think the Bulls are, like I said, they're actually on the right side of the curve at the right time. Mm. Whereas the Stormers are not, and and that's why I say yeah, I say that that at the moment the Stormers are there for the picking for the Bulls, and I think it, it indefinitely there's there's big reps on this game. You know they've been struggling to beat the Stormers, and if the real test now is going to be this game, and it's no better, it's it's good that it's be it's against a South African team uh, in that sense, but also bad that you know one of us, our teams are going to be out. But yeah, I, I just think you know the Bulls can. I, I didn't see it before, but the way that the season has unfolded, the, I think the the pendulum has sort of shifted uh, to, yeah. towards them, you know. And 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 I think we should call them out a bit more, you know, because they were light blue and powder blue before. Now they, I think they're trying to find a solid uh, solid base color there. So we'll see how it goes uh, for them. But overall, I mean, just. You can't fault them, man. They took their yeah. chances. They did what they had to do. And at the end of the day, they still had to take those chances. 
you, you know, that's that, that's what I hang my hat on, you know, and the fact that yeah. they did and they cut out some of the mistakes that they had in, in previous weeks with handling errors, not being able to build momentum. Yeah. They've ticked those boxes. So I think Coach Jake might, might, uh, will, will be satisfied that the fundamental boxes are being ticked, but, you know, you'll know that they, they there is quite some distance if they are going to try and go all the way in this thing. Yeah, moving on to Sharks. And I, I feel the same, the way that you say that the Bulls tick those boxes. I feel the accuracy that they had is something that's missing for the yeah. Sharks because for Werner Cox try, for Norcia's try, those were the times they were accurate and they were clinical. There were plenty yeah. of times where they get the ball wide into a dangerous position and then it's just, it lets them down. The accuracy lets them down. And it yeah. seems like it's just something, something that's always happened. Dominant scrum. Yeah. They they were, you know, especially early, they were getting that ball out wide, but it's just the accuracy not there. Yeah, uh, accuracy not there. And also just the, too much talking. You know, I was getting annoyed. Is that yes, fine. In the first half, it, you know, it was it was merited, you know, that you know, you're not gonna stand back in your own house. I understand that. But there needs to come a point where it stops and, you know, it's a refocus to say, okay, let's get the job done, considering the lead that they had and also understanding the opposition that you're playing and knowing that they, they, they're not, they also, they, 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 they also have pride. I mean, there's internationals in there, you know, so they're not just going to come out second off and let you continue doing what you do. They're going to fight, mm. you know, and uh, the Sharks came out and I think they came out, they went back to sleep, you know, and, and, and they got punished. And this, the, 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 this is, has been my concern for a number of weeks with the Sharks is that, you know, we, we, we can see the qualities. I mean, that first half, you, you couldn't have asked for a better first half against a, a, a ferocious monster team. They were coming, you know, but the Sharks just had too much dominance, too much power. They were, you know, and they executed and, and they were clinical enough. Uh, then comes the defensive lapses, the, the, the just drops in concentration, easy trust, getting guys, teams back in the game before you know it. You, and you, again, you, it goes you, to you, that you, thing. Sorry, it goes to that thing of, of yeah. that I said last week, the laziness in defending. Like that fast yeah. team, shooting for an intercept when you're offside, when it's like you could have just reloaded and defended yes. the short side, but you decide it's 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 a laziness. Yeah, and then it's penalty try, you know. It, it, it like it, it, some of the things, as I was saying, like it, it, it's just too easy. Other teams are just getting cheap points off the Sharks. If I can put it like that, it's just yeah. it's cheap points. They're not working hard for their for 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 their yeah. for, for for their scores, you know. And and I think that's the most frustrating thing about the Sharks team is that they just they are underachievers right now, you know. And look, I understand there's a new coach that came in midway and things like that. So for them to even be where they are right now, you know, we'd have to you know give them credit, but but. I still say it's still not good enough because of the the, the performance. They it, it just just by virtue of points and yes, okay, you know th that they got into this position, you know. But in terms of consistency, they're not there. You know, it, it's just it's just poor. And considering the, the the quality that they have, the box that are in the team, mind you, I think the Sia Kulisi injury also sort of affected them because he was looking dangerous and Bosch. Uh, yeah, I, I think I think those yes. Let's be honest; those did have an effect, you know. But at the end of the day, you you, you, you twenty to you how many points up at half time, and then you go and you blow that. That's just poor. That, that's again, that's inexcusable. For for me, it's things like leading up to that fussy penalty try. The reason they got into that situation was why is Lucanio Am doing box kicks? Mm. You know, it's 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 just lapses in concentration that yeah. puts them in those positions and it's it's week after week after week that it keeps on happening yeah 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 it's really and like i say it's, it's just it's, it's unacceptable you know you can't hang with it but look uh, the bounce of the rugby ball at the end of the day right so now it's knockouts you know they can you just hope for them that they can find and finally just click and gel in the knockouts and just and push it through and be a dark horse because when you're looking at it in, in, across the the field in terms of the the last the last eight that are there 
they the sharks for me are more of the dark horse in terms of the way that they've been on and off you know so yeah uh, we can just hope that they can just kick on or fix you know and gel and put together a full 80 performance 80 minute performance yeah. you know we haven't seen that in a long time from the sharks and and yeah. it's disappointing uh, there's nothing more to say other than it's just disappointing you know it's really it's yeah it's hard to stomach yeah i think they'll 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 be in with a shot looking i mean thinking back to the last time that they played lens away i think they'll be in with a chance it's just those lapses of concentration and like you yeah. said if they can put together a full 80 maybe we'll see something yeah, it's knockouts. They, they, look, the nice thing about this is, look, it's it's either you go big or you go home. You know, now now we're gonna see who's who in the zoo. You know, really in terms of the South African teams, uh, r- right now, because yes, Stormers have been singing their praises, you know, the whole season, and rightfully so. Um, right now, it's very difficult. If we're being honest with ourselves, looking at the three teams that are in there, it's very difficult to see. Mm. you know how our teams are gonna at least even get to the final. You know, it's just it's the it's a long way around, but they can do it, yes, you know, uh, but there's still a lot that they need to fix, really, especially the Sharks, especially the Sharks. I'm just, yeah. Those and guys Lens are, the, are going to be coming off a to-lose game, you know, they're going to be coming off a to-lose game this weekend. So, yeah. yeah. There's they opportunity. Really, there's opportunity. There's some opportunities mm. there. Um, Kolisi, Kolisi out. It looks like he's going to miss the World Cup. There's question marks over Edsobeth. There's question marks over our coach going forward. It's just, it's, you don't want question uncertainty. Marks. Yeah, you don't. It's just question marks. They've, 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 it, it looks like the rest of the coaching staff, they've kept them on, signed new contracts. But even within that group, you don't know who's going to be elected as, as the main man. So it's just, mm. it's, it's not good to go into a major tournament with such question marks. Yeah, no, it isn't. It isn't. And I think again, you know, <laughs> I'm going to go back to say, you know, all right, fine. Yes, they try to, lo- to manage player load and stuff like that. But the, the, the there has been, I think because the last season, especially at Park level where there, uh, it, that's just a concern of mine where I mentioned in terms of players being, you know, played into the ground. You know, and unfortunately, these injuries now have happened. You know, whether or not they will have a effective long term if the guys do or do not go to the World Cup. Um, fact of the matter is that if a guy like Itzabeth and Sia Kulisi don't go to the World Cup, uh, no, it's, it's not going to be nice to hear this as a South African. But we must know our chances. They they also going up in smoke. I think uh, with that because they they too big influential figures you know they just yeah it's 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 tough it's really tough and even from a coaching perspective i think they could have waited until after the tournament you know there was no need you know but they said they were going to break they said that they were going to break it in a new story my thing is even if they break it in a new story don't confirm it yeah you know because we don't need these distractions. It's, the World Cup is coming. It's it's very close, you know, as much as it seems far. It's very close. And, yeah, look, we just hope that our captain and, and the vice captain, you know, they they are fine. Because we, we both know they are the captain and vice captain. The, the, the backline guys are just given vice captaincy just for sure, <laughs> to be honest. But, yeah, no. It's it's really we should be concerned because like for like who's coming in you know um that's gonna deliver that or even more or even something different that's better um it's hard to see yeah I think it's hard to see there's a lot of speculation about that to be honest I don't really even think we should be getting into it because running up running up to the tournament we are, that's when we'll really mm. get to see who who will take those yeah. minutes and run with them it's easy to say it should be so and so it should be so and so but once they actually get those minutes and you can see what they do with those minutes i think that's when True. we'll see who it's take opportunity up place. again it's opportunity for somebody else you know somebody to stake a claim at the, at the end of the day it's the business of sports you know so yes injuries happen it's not nice unfortunate but it's opportunity for somebody or for some guys to become heroes 
you know, within that team environment. But it, look, the, the reality is that the if particularly those two don't go, Sia and Eben, it's a bit, then it's, um, the task is becoming a bit more difficult. But we'll cross that bridge when we get there, I suppose, you know. It's just, yeah, it's touch and go, man. It's touch any and closing, go. Any closing remarks, Chris? Uh, look, uh, I think I, I, I just want to mention the Curry Cup. I'm still, I, I'm enjoying the Curry Cup. I'm enjoying the games there. I think the the, the last weekend, the Pumas, the Pumas showing their metal uh, to to pull one over over Western Province. You know, Sharks also against the Cheetahs. I think uh, it, it's good, 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 good rugby all around. You know, in terms of what we have in our Curry Cup. You know, uh, I'm surprised by the performance of a team like the Griffins. You know, as much as you know, they 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 they, they cop some points. You know, but they 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 play, they're fighting. It's not like they don't belong. I mean, to to come out with a bonus point, you know, away from home, from try scoring bonus point. I think that says a lot about that team, you know, and why they got promoted. Um, so yeah, Curry Cup. I'm I'm looking forward to this weekend's action over the long weekend. Looking forward to it as well. Message to the URC guys: just rest, just rest, get better. Yeah, they need to rest. They mustn't play them this weekend, man. You know, they need to they need to go think about their jobs, what they need to do for us next weekend.